Okay, hello to today's um, exercise about Monte Carlo learning. I'm Hendrik, I will be your host for today's exercise. And yeah, let's get into it. So today we will be looking at Monte Carlo based prediction and Monte Carlo based um, on policy epsilon greedy control. And also we will be talking or we will be taking our first steps with the gym API today. Or actually, at this point, is a gymnasium API. Um, yeah, the difference between the two is fairly small between the gymnasium API and the gym API, and I will get to that in this in a second. So, let's have a look at this image here, which is a depiction of the gymnasium uh, of the gym API. So down here we have our agent, which is um, essentially the reinforcement learning algorithm of your choice. And yeah, this algorithm decides somehow on an action to take and puts that into the system or into the environment. The environment takes that action and its current state and returns the following state, so the next state that results out of this interaction with the action. Um, the reward for this interaction, a done flag, whether yeah, the current episode has terminated or is done, and info. Um, at this point, I directly have to note this, this image is a bit outdated. So in the gymnasium API, there's no done flag, but there's terminated and truncated, um, which will hopefully be uh, get a bit clearer in the following. So termination is usually that the end goal is reached and truncation is that something out of the... Um, it's not actually part of the MDP has happened. We will get to that in a little bit. Usually... Yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit. The info is actually not used in this exercise, just as a side note. Okay, so in this exercise, we want to um, have our race car run through our racetrack. The racetrack is depicted here in this image. Um, it is uh, made up of a few yeah, yeah, like pixel-like coordinates. So in red, we have three, three positions which make up the starting line. And in white we have the goal, and the cars, or the car is supposed to drive through this racetrack from the starting line to the finish line. Um, yeah, the, the car is essentially just a pixel in this coordinate system here, in this pixel coordinate system. Okay, yeah, maybe let's ha directly have a look at the. Um, at the the exact yeah the the states and everything for this exact environment. So our state is made up of four things: of the position in y coordinates, in x coordinates, and the um, velocity in the y direction and the x direction. The reward is just minus one per step. So for each time step that you need um, from the starting line to the finish line will get a penalty of minus one. So the longer you take, the higher your cumulative, uh, the lower, yeah, I mean negative, um, the, the lower your cumulative uh, reward or return is. Then we have a terminated flag. This is um, set to true if we, once we reach the finish line. We have the truncated flag, which is um, set to true in this case if um, the car leaves the track, so if it drives into the wall. Um, in other cases, this could be something like a time limit, um, which is not actually part of the MDP, but yeah, I mean, it gets a bit complicated. Let's not go too deep in, into that here. So in this case, truncation occurs when the car drives into the wall. And then we have this info thing, which we which I don't actually use here. Okay, let's have a look at the action. So the action is um, can can be minus one, zero, or one in in both x and y, and as a result, this is essentially the, the action accelerates the car. So um, a, a one in the x direction would increase the velocity by one from one step to the next, um, and also then minus one would decrease it in that direction and so on and so on. Theoretically, the velocity could, you could just increase the velocity, but then it gets harder to control. 
because you can also only break by one per step. Let's reduce the velocity by one. Okay, here we have a little um, thing about the uh, encoding. So inside of the environment, the action is encoded as an integer between zero and eight. And then this is transformed to a tuple of two elements, minus one, zero, and one in X, and minus one, zero, and one in, in Y. So for example, minus one and minus one would be zero in, in the integer value. So minus one, minus one tuple would be zero. And one, one would be eight, for example. One minus one would be two, two. So just, so you have an idea. And yeah, zero would be breaking in both directions or like to the top left here. And two would be, um, yeah, to the top right, just acceleration to the top right. Okay, that's it for the environment introduction. Let's get to the actual tasks. So here we have some imports. Here we build the cars that we want to drive through. So this here is just the actual, yeah, the actual track, which we've already seen, this C-shaped, uh, this flipped C. Here we build an environment, make an environment out of it. So the code for the racetrack environment is actually given in a pi file in, in the folder if you want to take a look at it. And this is um, for visualization of the track, which we can see here. This is a reverse C, sh uh, the flipped C shape that I was talking about. Okay, in the first step, we want to have a look at Monte Carlo based policy evaluation. And um, for this, let's have also have a look at the pseudocode for it. All right, let's have it open on the site and let's take a look. So maybe first off, what what is policy evaluation? So what we want to do here is we want, for a given policy, we want to evaluate the state values for this policy. And a state value is um, how good is the state with regards to the, um, to the task if you follow the given policy. So that means that this is always with res the, the, the value in the state value is always with respect to a policy. Um, we are given a dummy policy here, which we want to evaluate. So we want to evaluate how good is um, how good is each state with respect to this policy or, or using this policy. And just to give you a quick idea, what this policy does. Um, yeah, we are starting in one of these red spots here, and then initially the policy just drives the car, like accelerates the car by what to one to 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 one in to the velocity of one in the x direction. So the car would drive with a velocity one to the to the right here until it stands in front of the wall. At which uh, then then it is accelerated by one downwards, and the x velocity is removed. So the car would go to the right, go down here, and then it would go down in, in this corner here to the left. And then it could also start here, for example, and go here and then to the wall or up here and then to the wall. And it would always go down and then left. Now you will quickly realize that this is not the optimal way to drive through this course. You always stay at a velocity of one. And also um, it would make more sense to like go to the left here and already like go to the right here maybe to, to go faster. Okay, nevertheless, we want to evaluate this policy because this is like, um, we don't need to have the perfect policy. We just want to, to see how to evaluate a given policy. And you can also see in the pseudocode here over here, this is also the input to our algorithm here, which is good, I would say. Okay, let's have a look at the solution. Um, there's a lot of auxiliary functions up here, which we won't take. We will take a closer look at them, but not initially. Initially, we will go down to the main loop, which is given here. Okay, so let's take a look at the main loop down here in this cell. And first off, let's look at the initializations up here. So one thing that we want to initialize is are the um, state values. So we set all state values up here to zero. 
in the pseudocode it is said that we can initialize them arbitrarily arbitrary arbitrary to arbitrary values um, this is usually true but we want we are doing it the, the uh, averaging a little bit different in this in the, in the pseudocode is um, than in the pseudocode so we want to initialize them all to zero here I will um, I hope this gets clearer as we go on okay and then we have this n dict here which is uh, um, used to count the occurrences of a specific state. Um, it should be noted that this is a bit also a bit different to the pseudocode where it said that we have this list which we actually don't have here. As I said, this will get hopefully get clearer as we go on why this is the case, but just note that this is the case. Okay. Now, then also we have the discount factor which is set to one in, in this, yeah, this doesn't actually discount anything, but still it's there, so you could potentially discount something. We have the number of episodes, which is set to 500. Um, this means we are yeah, training or learning for 500 episodes. And we have a max episode length of two, 2000, which is not actually needed here. Um, yeah, this is kind of a safety thing where your agent could get stuck in a, in a while loop theoretically and forever run through the environment and then yeah, our code will just get stuck and this is just a safety to um, yeah, ha have not such that this does cannot happen. Yeah. Okay, then let's take a look at this main loop. This is a main loop that can, can also be seen in the pseudocode here or like this loop. And this loop actually has the two main parts. One is this first line here, which is the generation of an episode and then th there's a rest here, which is um, which is the learning portion of the of the algorithm. Okay, that, let's first take a look at the gathering of experience or the, the the episode rollout. And for this, we can control click at this function to see its definition. It takes in the policy and the maximum maps maximum length um, that an episode can be. And what we want to do now is we want to um, go through a single episode and gather data. So we will we, we, we go through one episode by following the policy and we will gather data um, from which we will learn afterwards. So this data is stored in these lists over here. So we have well, in this list and a set and we have four, four different things here. So first we have the states list, which is all states that we have visited visited in the episode. Then we have the rewards, which is all rewards that were acquired through interaction. And then now it gets a bit interesting. We also have the visited states, which is yeah, the unique states that we have seen. So that means um, in states, if, if we visit a, a single state twice, it will be twice, it will come up twice in the states list, but it will still only be, uh, be there once in the visited states. And this is done via a set. A set is similar to a list. And, uh, the difference is that um, if you add something to a set and it's already in there, it won't uh, won't be added twice. It will still only be once, be there once in the set. Then we have the first visit list, which is used. Um, it's like the same length as as the states and rewards list, and it will uh, hold um, the a, a boolean values whether a given state is the first time it was visited or not. Okay, now we want to fill these lists by a, via a, an episode rollout. So first we reset the track and get to the initial state, which is somewhere on the starting line of our of our race track. And then um, now we start rolling out the episode, so we go through the time steps. And the first first thing we do is we append this initial state to our states list. And we edit also edit uh, we check whether um, this state is already in the visited states list, which it is not because it's a first state. But still, we check that. And if it is in the visit, if it has already been visited, we um, write a true. Uh, if it has not been visited so far, the f we, we append a true to this first visit li list. And if, it's, if it um, has been visited so far, we add a false. And then we add the state to the visited states set. And yeah, if if it's already in there, um, it's 
If it's already in there, nothing happens. And if it's not in there, it's added to the set. Okay, then we come to the interaction part. So we use this interact function, which is defined a bit upwards. This takes the policy and the state and returns the next state, the reward, the termination flag, and the truncation flag. So let's take a look at what this does. Um, okay, so as I said, it takes the policy and the current state. And depending on the policy, so it, it, it pushes the state into the policy and the policy tells it, okay, what would I do, what would I propose to do in this state? And then, and then now from this, an action comes out and this action is in the form of this integer value. Like in the form of this integer value in this wheel here. And then what we do is we take this and we um, transform it yeah, to this tuple of x and y coordinates. This is done in this action to tuple uh, function. And then what we do next, now this is the interaction like the um, gym, gym interaction that I was talking about, the gym API. So the environment takes an action into it and with this action and its current internal state, it computes the following state, the reward for this interaction, whether this interaction terminates the episode and whether this or whether this action truncates the episode. And all of this is just returned. This is what happens here. So essentially the interaction um, decides on an action to take and applies it to the environment. Okay, now we do this here in the loop. And then if truncation is occurred, and um, yeah, okay, we, we check if truncation is occurred. And this is a bit of a choice. What you want to do generally as a so truncation oftentimes is not what you want. I mean, it depends a little bit on the application, but in this case, truncation happens if we left, leave the track and you have a few options that you, what you can do here. On the one hand, you could um, penalize this by um, giving it a strong negative reward for, for, this, uh, for truncation. But what we do here is we reset, um, we reset the track, so we reset the car to the starting position. And this means since um, the car is punished, if it takes a long time to get to the finish line, and yeah, this reset uh, hurts like this is the, the accumulated reward because it takes even longer if it has been reset. So this is just to punish uh, if the car leaves the track, it's reset. Okay, then we do a little uh, uh, time index updating here. So the next state in this iteration of the loop will be the state in the next iteration. So this is why this is incremented in a sense. Furthermore, we save the reward and if termination has occurred, we break the, this episode. So if you have reached the finish line, we are stopping the episode and we are done. Okay. Let's look... Yeah, and, and then just another, once this loop is done, and once this one iteration of the loop is done, the next iteration starts. And this is how we slowly drive through the, through the, episode, uh, through the, through the racetrack. Okay, yeah, if this loop is finished, either by termination, I mean, it's, yeah, okay, or by reaching the max episode length, we return all of the data that we have gathered to learn from it. And let's look, so we, 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 we are done with the first part of this loop. So we gathered experience from rolling out an episode. Now we want to take all of that experience and throw it into, and, and use it to learn, uh, to update our state values. And this is what's happening in the learning part of the, of this main loop. And we have this function here. And what happens here is essentially, it's more or less what happens in this pseudocode, but it's not 100% the same. The main difference is that we are not using this, this is the averaging as it is done here but instead we are doing incremental averaging. So generally, if you look at this, um, oh, okay, I can't see my, my cursor. If you look at this, um, so I'm always talking about this averaging over here. So if you do averaging, averaging normally, you would, the average is just one divided by the number of um, elements, and then you sum up the elements. This is like normal averaging. This is what's happening in this pseudocode here. What's happening in the, in the code so in the actual code on the on the left is um, that we do like incremental or, or recurrent updates to the mean. 
So what we do is we take the um, we take the old mean, which is like mu j min minus one, and we add this difference divided by the number of, by the new number of elements to it. And essentially, what happens here is we denormalize the old average, add the new value to it, and normalize everything again. And this can be written as such. And this is what is implemented in the code over here. This is, this is what's happening over here. Um, maybe you have to think about it a little bit. Um, yeah, but that's, that's what's, what's going on here. And this is just um, increment, incrementation of this j in a sense. So each, each state has its own count. And these are incremented here. And then um, each, the, the, the value of the state is updated here. Okay, but I, maybe I, I skipped too far here. Let's, let's just go from the top. So essentially, this, this learning works as follows. So you start out by um, setting the return to zero. Then you go backwards through all, every, everything that you have gathered. So we start out in the, in the learning, we start out with the last um, state that was, that was found. And that is, we do this because then we can incrementally um, compute the return. So in the, la in the last step, so in the last step of the trajectory, um, the return is just the reward. And you can see if g is zero, the, re uh, the return is just set to reward. Now, if this is the first visit to the state, we do this learning, which I just talked about. What, um, we update the, 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 the um, state count and we do this um, incremental or, or recurrent um, update to the, to the state value, which is, yeah. And then we go to the second to last um, state and we update the return using this formula. And if this is the first visit to the state, we once more, we increase the, the count and we update the state values using this formula. What happens here is what we do more or less is we average over um, our visits to each state or, or the first visits to each state in, in over the episodes. Um, and we do so doing this um, recurrent average computation. Yeah, and after we've run backwards through our whole episode, we just return the new estimates for the values and the, the dict which um, holds the um, counts for each of the states. Okay, and that's actually already everything for Monte Carlo based prediction. So we do these, we, we roll out the episode and we learn from the episode backwards for num number of episodes times, and then we are already done. And what comes out of this, in this case, for this um, policy, is this result. So these are the state values um, plotted. And you can see here, this, this um, belongs to this dark red square here. And this, this is the minus one, because this is the expected return for the state given the policy. So in this square, you would go to the left because it is what the policy does. So you would, in the next step, you are in the, um, on the finish line. And this is why there's only a negative reward of minus one in this case. For the one to the right of that, you would have to take two steps and three steps to one from the one to the right of that. And that's why with a policy, you would get an expected return. You would always get the return of minus, minus three from this point onwards. Going to the top left here, you would have to take minus I would have to take 17 steps to get to the finish line from here, which is why the expected return is minus 17, and that is also the state value. Okay, yeah, and then, yeah, obviously for each step you get closer, it reduces by one, and but you can still clearly see this is not optimal. You could go a lot faster. I mean, and also, um, you could already go to the left here, for example, to get, get, far, get uh, cut out two steps or something like this. Okay, so let's have a look at Monte Carlo based prediction, uh, control, my Monte Carlo based control to see how to um, improve on this. How can we improve the policy that we have? Okay, what we will be using here is on policy epsilon greedy control. Um, and I also brought you some pseudocode for it, which we will look at 
a little bit. But we'll also go through the code. So what we have here is our initial policy from which we start. This is actually the same policy as we um, had before, but this time around it's written as a stochastic policy. This means that there's one more dimension to this policy, which is the action dimension. And the um, action to choose is like yeah, more or less one hot encoded. This means, well, or there's actually the probabilities for each action. And in this case, the policy that comes out of this is still exactly the same. So um, maybe if we go up, up, up to the other policy, here we see, okay, for a specific um, action, uh, for a specific state, we choose the action of five. And now if we go down here, this is written a bit differently because um, here, for a specific action goes up to here, like the indexing goes up to here. And then if for the fifth action, we have a probability of one. That means we always choose the fifth action. Um, yeah, and for example, here, the fourth action has probability zero. And now this goes on for everything else. The exact shape of this is it's not 100% important here, just to give you an idea of what this looks like. Okay, now let's see how we solve the task now. Once again, there's some helper functions to help you implement the algorithm. But let's start out with the um, with the main loop once more, which can be seen here. No, it's not fully in the image. I, yeah, okay, but I think it's fine. So it goes on a little bit on the right here, which is cut off, but uh, it should be fine, I think. Okay, once more, this time around, we um, actually have the action values and not the state values. So the state values are the expected return in a given state if you follow the policy. And the action values have one more, or in this case, two more dimensions, which are the action dimensions. So the action values um, are the expected returns if you, um, in, a, in a, for a given state and action combination that you choose, and if you, when you afterwards follow a given policy. So like there's one more action in, in the action values that you can choose in, in contrast to the state actions as state values. Now we have this indict, which is, sim is also um, a counting dictionary, but in this case, it is a state action counting. And this will also be the trend towards this whole algorithm. Most, thi most things are quite similar to the um, Monte Carlo based um, policy evaluation. But usually everything will be state action based and not state based. This is the biggest difference between the two. Okay, now let's quickly go through the code. So first off, um, we have epsilon, which is the probability for exploration or for choosing a random action, a non-greedy action. We have gamma, which is a discount factor. Once more, we are not really discounting anything because it's set to one. Um, the number of episodes is 5,000 in this, this case. So we, we are improving our policy for five thousand episodes and we have a max episode length of 200 which in this case could theoretically actually apply so if our policy randomly decides to so if, if through random actions or car drives in the wall the, the whole time it could come to 200 steps for this episode and then we would just re restart everything okay this is just for visualization purposes of the tracks or of the position of the car in the track then we into, uh, initialize our track some sizes of the course for the visualization. And then we come to the main loop, which has a different, a, a similar shape to what we've seen before. We have um, a ga gathering of experience, with it, which is um, an episode rollout. And we have a learning from this gathered experience. And then we also have this down here, which is just um, visualization of the, of, the, of the positional maps of the car. Okay, so once more, let's go into the gathering of experience um, and see what's different to what we've seen before. The main thing that quickly comes up is, as I've already said, we are looking at state actions now. So not, on, not only the state is what we're interested in, but the state and which action we chose in that state. So now we are, yeah, we are, we are listing these tuples. So not only which um, state, but also which action we chose in that state. The rewards are like the same as before. We now have the visited state actions. So 
um, if you come to a state, to so the same same state twice, this is, this could still be a first a first visit if you choose a different action in both case both cases. So we are stacking up the state action combinations here into a set. So these are the unique. Um, state action combinations that you that you uh, we have seen in the episode, and then we have the first visit list, which which is a a boolean list that tells us if the current state action is um, the first time that we have done this in this episode, or if it has already been done before. This is a positional map just for um, visualization, and then let's start with the actual loop. So we initialize the first state, and then we go into the into the loop. This once more is just the positional map for visualization. And then we have um, the interaction with the environment, which is a bit different. This is one, this, this, and so the interaction with the environment or the choosing of an action and the state action that everything is based on state actions is the main, main difference between um, the evaluation and the control parts. Okay, so let's quickly take a look into the interaction function. So we give in pi, which is a policy, the current state, whether we want deterministic actions or whether we want to do exploration and the probability of exploration. Okay, so first, so in this here, we just choose an action based on the policy, which I will, we will get to in a second. And then we use this action so as before, using the gymnasium API to get the next state, get the reward, get termination and truncation signals. Okay, now let's, how is the action chosen in this case? We, this is what we will be looking at now. Okay, so we give in the policy, we give in the state, and did, whether deterministic actions and what the probability for a random action is in this case. And now if, um, with a probability of one minus epsilon, we choose an action just depending on the um, on the on the policy. So greedily, we choose the best action, so the action that with the best action value. And with the probability of epsilon, we just choose any random action that's possible in the environment. Furthermore, just this is just a side note. This deterministic flag is used, um, for example, for evaluation, because in evaluation you usually don't want to ev uh, do to to do any more. Um, exploration. So um, if that's, this is said so true, we always have deterministic behavior and this, yeah, for, um, this is interesting for evaluation later on. So in the training, this is set to false. Okay, and then yeah, we get out a number, the integer, and we transform it to the tuple here, and then this is returned. Okay, and then yeah, the rest of the, of the grazing of experience so yeah, we, we get out the action from this either um, greedy action or random action. We apply it to, this, to the environment and we return all of this. Note that this time around we also return the action. And because it's actually necessary for the learning in the um, policy evaluation, the action was not actually necessary for the learning. Okay, yeah, now let's look at the rest of this um, guess experience function. So here, we do the interaction, either with a random action or with a greedy action. And then we save the state action. And we append the state action to yeah, the state actions list. And we check if the state action combination has already been chosen in this, um, uh, in this episode. And then we add the state action combination to the set, which means it's only added if it's not already there. Otherwise, nothing changes about the set. Once more, we, if truncation has happened, we reset the car to the starting line just to punish uh, driving to the side of the of the track. And then we increment the state. So the next state in this loop will be the state in the next loop. And we uh, append the reward to, um, to the rewards list. If we reach the finish line, we stop the episode and then we return all of the data that we have gathered. And we just go through this loop until termination occurs or the max maximum episode length is reached. Okay, after, so now we have the first part done. We are done with the first part. The biggest difference is 
that the actions are not chosen by a static policy, but instead the policy changes over time because of the learning. And um, we also, it's also, there's also a possibility with probability epsilon that we do something random. Okay, now let's see, let's look at the second part of this um, main loop, which is the learning. So in this part of the, of the loop, we want to, um, we want to update the policy and we want to update the action values. And also this is a side product. We also update the, um, the, the, the dictionary that counts the state actions. Okay. Let's look at the, um, learning part, which is, yeah, the, the, the lower part of this algorithm here. So here, this is the, this is the generation of an episode once more. And this is yeah the learning part. Okay, let's look at the learning part. Again, we start by setting our return to zero. This is again to um, so that the last element, so the last state gets the reward as a return in this in this function here. And we, yeah, we again loop backwards through the data that we have gathered. We start with the last state in the trajectory. And now for each each uh, state that we visited we yeah we update our return back like from the back to the front and if the current state um state action combination um has not been visited so uh, like earlier in this episode um we update the st the the count here and we also update the action values uh, this, yeah, this is the action values, exactly. And this is what you can see in these two lines. This is a pseudocode for the for this um, updating, which I just talked about. So here you can see the n x k u k uh, to n x k u k plus one. And here you can say the q value update or action value update that is just below that this line here. You can see that here we also do this we also do this um, incremental or recurrent update to the state uh, to the action values. Uh, this is identical to how we updated the state values in the task number one. Yeah, and then here we update our policy in an epsilon greedy to an epsilon greedy fashion. Um, first, we choose the best. So we we ask the the action values. Okay, for for a given state. Uh, so maybe I should say that. If you take the first four elements of the state action, we only get the state. So what I've just marked is the state. So we ask the, the action values, okay, what do you think about the state? And what is the best? And then we, we ask, um, yeah, what is the best action in the state using this argmax? And then it tells us, okay, I would choose this action. This is the best action in the state. This is the highest action value. So the highest um, return in the future. And then we update the policy to reflect this. So the policy is changed so that the maximum is for um, the maximum in the state. So the maximum the, the, that for the given state, the chosen action is the, the action that was deemed best by the, um, by the action values. And this is done by setting this to, to this term here. This is a maximum, always a maximum. Okay. Yeah, and this is all that is there is to it. You go backwards through the through all the data that you have gathered, and if this is a first visit, you do this update the state values as uh, the action values, and you update the policy to reflect to to reflect the the action values, and then you return all, all the, the policy. Then you return the policy, the action values, and the um, the counting dict. Okay. Yeah, this is all there is to it. Honestly, honestly, you you roll out the episode and you update policy and action values and you do that over and over. You roll out the policy, uh, you roll out the the episode with the policy. You update policy and action values and you repeat your process over and over. And you do that for five thousand steps, and then in the end, this is um, a plot from the training. Here you can see a little plot from the training. And then below here, we have the um, evaluation. And as you can see here, we set deterministic to true. This means we disable the epsilon 
um, for the evaluation. This means we always choose the greedy deterministic action. So the action with the best action action value. Here you, you can see the result from that. So the white, dot, white dots are where our car was in this episode. And you can see mm, that it actually yeah, skips, skips fields by going faster and also does not go to the wall anymore. So it goes, yeah, it overall goes faster than, than before, which is a good thing that it means our algorithm learned something um, and improved upon the dummy policy from the beginning. Okay, now to the next course, which actually, yeah, is, is very difficult to solve using Monte Carlo methods. That's why it's um, also noted here that this is really, really difficult. And we, the, the, the solution is essentially the same as before. The only problem is that this course is a lot more complex. And in theory, the card would go to the right. With, with a dummy po if you just use a dummy policy, the car would go to the right, then it would go down, and then it would just go left and drive into this wall initially. And what, what needs to happen is that by random actions, the car goes up here and through the into the finishing line so that it knows where to go. And now uh, yeah, it needs to learn this. It needs to, and once it has this figured out, this should um, be also be solvable with these methods. It just would just take probably take a long time until um, the car actually learns to do this by chance. So, yeah, we can see here six six hours. It needed six hours to find this policy here. Um, yeah, you, if you've done this, I've, yeah, this is really nice. Um, but if not, we can also see in the future we will learn other algorithms that can do this more ef more effectively. Okay, that's it for me. If you have any questions, um, you can ask them in the forum. Yeah, this is not the actual live uh, live live exercise because um, we had some technical issues. So I, I recorded this in hindsight. Um, there were no major questions during the exercise, but if you have any now, you can ask them in the throw. Okay, thank you very much and see you soon.